Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So this video is going to be about making a CNC flat coil winder. So this video is actually going to be the quick version. I'll post a longer version later of all the details. But basically, me and my friend Richard, we wanted to build a CNC flat coil winder. Okay, so these are some of the details that we pitched some ideas around. All right, and the end result looks like this. This is actually a flat by filer, two by filer coils. This one's still on the tape. This one's on the tape, but I've used glue to get them off. So anyway, let me show you all the details as fast as I can. Let's go. There's today's date. This is what I wanted. This was the first thought. Here were the different type of rollers we thought about. This was the second configuration. We thought about how to hold the wire in place. I looked through all my old parts and pieces and tried to find something useful. Found what I was looking for in this one. Found a piece of aluminum to start with. Found some precision bearings. Sketched out a brief idea on paper. Did a lot of this. Did a lot of that. Did some of this. Made this big mess. Did some of that. Here's today's date. 3D printed that Swiss cheese piece. Attach this jobby to the end of that jobby. Spring tension, just the right amount. Decided I needed a rubber roller, so I added a piece of silicon rubber to the outside of this with some super glue. Used Fusion 360 to make the wire placement spiral using morphed spiral. I made some edits to the G-code so that I could remove the beginning start of the spiral because it wasn't quite in line with what I was trying to do. Used Simplify's 3D G-code viewer to make sure the coil was going to be placed in the right spot. I cut out this removable tape frame so I could remove the frame from the bed with the tape placed on the bottom side instead of on the bed surface. Found out this must be on some bearings to roll very free but this spool is very heavy, causes problems. The laptop and the 3D printer are all running off the sun. Solar power, baby. I did test some crazy geometry just to see what kind of angles and degrees I could get. This test didn't turn out very well. Also tested a lot of other geometries, bifiler, single wind, and anything else I could think of just to give this thing the best ability for testing. I did uh, run this wire right here, which is 36 AWG. It's very small. This wire is 30 AWG. I did test different types of tape, and I also used super glue to coat the top of the wire and then peel the back off so I had a coil that had absolutely no tape on it whatsoever, like this one. As you can see here, which it is hard to see, I machined the end of this so that it acted as a clamp and I've clamped it onto my tube. Now my tube actually has a piece of wood inside of there and then deep inside of there is a piece of Teflon and the Teflon has a really small hole drilled in the end of it and it's the same size as the wire. Then these are actually four bearings on the shaft there are set screws on the back holding the shaft in place on each side. And then the roller has just a piece of rubber that I glued on the end of it. Originally I was going to use the center of the bearing as the wire guide, but that didn't quite work out. The rubber seems to work pretty well. So yeah, this was just a very simple idea. And then the uh, piece right here on the printer itself, i got the wire hanging through there. It is actually a, uh, a tube probably can't see it. It's just a tube, brass bushings. I was going to use bearings originally, but there was, there's a felt wipers in there which keep it from uh, having too much play and uh, works really, really well. Can't complain whatsoever. Obviously there's a spring on there and a clip on the top to hold it in place. So, real quickly, I wanted to give you some details. So this is the RWG OSD CNC, 3D printer, laser, and uh, now coil winder, which is crazy. 
But uh, I've never actually printed anything with this because I haven't quite finished this yet. It's still a work in progress. The CNC head's up here. If you haven't seen that, I advise check it out on the website. Link's in the description. But this is a perfect setup for this. The spring tension on this is uh, basically the height. So you just set it where you're happy with the spring tension. And then this plate right here. So basically how this works is I made this frame. All right, I got a piece of wood attached here. You could put it on the bed surface, whatever, but I needed to affix this. So flip it over, put tape on the back side of here so it's sticky side up. Put this on here, screw it in place, and then the wire will stick to the tape as it's being laid. Now the wire is on this spool up here, it comes down and goes right to the middle. Then you got basically a cam follower. So any direction this goes is going to follow the back side of it. Now there's a minimum radius you can make with this because of the distance of the follower. However, for what I'm doing it seems to work pretty well. It also works in the spiral pretty well. And I've done some crazy geometries just to test out how tight I can get the tolerances. And uh, seems to work pretty well. I don't think you could do squares very well, but uh, tight corners aren't the best. But basically this just follows as the wire feeds through and lays it exactly where it needs to be. I use Fusion 360 and I use the morphed spiral and then I uh, edited, that's cam that is, and then I edited that G-code to remove the beginning and the end because it overlapped because it's trying to cut something. I'm trying to lay wire. Now the cool thing is, is I actually made um, a couple of files that were offset from each other and exactly the same wire diameter. And the wire would just lay on the, on the path, okay, and then I'd come back and lay the second wire in between that wire. So far that works pretty well, but once you get the first wire done, it's almost just as easy to go ahead and wrap the other um, winding by hand because it just falls into the slot. That works pretty well. However, I still need to do some more testing for that. But proof of concept is all I really wanted right now. And so far, this guy has produced exactly what I need, and I'm very happy with it in the matter of, I don't know, about uh, 20 hours I was able to make coils from an idea. So Richard uh, and I sat down and brainstormed this idea. I was actually wanting to spin the coil thinking that that's the way it needed to be done. And Richard said, why don't you just spin the head? And that way, you know, that, that's a little easier. So then I thought, yeah, I can make a cam follower and came up with this design. I tested it with just the metal rollers. Then I tested it with the rubber um, because the metal rollers weren't gripping and it wasn't following. I thought the wire would pull it and keep it where it's supposed to be, but that's not the case. So I just took a really thin piece of silicone and put it on there, uh, rubber. Worked just great, some super glue, and uh, yeah, everything seems to be working pretty well. I am very happy with that, so uh, without further ado, we'll cut to the end. If you'd like to see more about this uh, particular machine, I built this one piece at a time, and it is all documented up to this point. I haven't actually finished it, completed it yet, because I keep just modifying things and changing things and, uh, you know, playing around with different ideas, as you can see right here. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Well, hopefully that was interesting to you. My daughter sure loved it, didn't you? Yes. What do you think about it? I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you told me what you thought about it when you were watching it. I did? Yeah. And what do you think about it? It was cool. Yeah. Pretty sweet, eh? You're funny. I am. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting and you learned something. Um, the parts and pieces I just created in my mind and then machined them and then put them on there and went for a test run. And it seems to work fairly well. There's some uh, little things uh, that are kind of troublesome, such as the sticky service, um, the rubber roller, and also the idea of how to get the wire off the spool with basically zero uh, resistance, which has been the biggest challenge so far because to control that is kind of difficult. So anyway, here's a quick look again at the final version of one of these coils. This one's still on the tape. If it would focus. There you go. So that is a bifiler wound. There's two coils on there. So there's actually four coils 
in this stack. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day. God bless you guys. And read the Bible more. Anything else to say? No. You are sure full of excitement today. No. Exactly. Bye. Okay, this is a speed test. I don't really know what to expect. Let's see if I can keep the wire going fast enough. Here we go. There you go. That's a pretty fast coil. That has a spacing between it to wind the bifiler. I think I got the wire snagged right here so it didn't quite lay right. Everything else actually looks better than it does when it goes slow sometimes. Not too shabby.